The Galaxy Book Flex 2 so what are the changes from the first iteration? Well, I can guarantee you today the crucial findings we have today, no spec sheet, no publication has picked up on it. And this is what I truly love about this gig, whether our findings are good or bad. The second you start using the Galaxy Book Flex 2, you realize, you recognize how strong the hinges are. And basically you need two hands in order to open and close the lid. And this is probably a reflection of the build quality that device has. And I think it really is bad, but there's a bad. When you open up the lid like this here, you can see this, you need two hands, but the screen, the display still wobbles. It wobbles a bit more than I would like to really. Now this new version is not just a processor upgrade and it has many more ports or different ports. And I want to clarify one thing. It has only one Thunderbolt 4 port, not two, as some suggested, some publications said it has two. It doesn't. And yes, we have the return of the HDMI port and I still have mixed feelings about it. And yeah, before you guys comment, well, you should know before you buy the device what the ports are, you are correct, I do. But this is the only version I can get here in my country. So there's that. And this unit costs around $2,000 as a Tiger Lake i7 unit, 11th generation Intel Core processor. And this is not just an upgrade. It is way more than just an upgrade. Reason being is it has Wi-Fi 6, for example. And all of that together makes it a bit more future-proof when you buy this device for the coming years. So yes, this is the 5G version. Just in case I haven't mentioned it yet, but you probably ask yourself, what is different with the 5G version compared to the non-5G version? Well, let me tell you, it already starts with the ports. Some of it is confusing, but the ports on the non 5G version, basically you have two Thunderbolt 4 ports instead of just one. The placement of the S Pen is still on the right hand side, whereby you can see here, pretty much I have it in the front, it moved from the side to the front. And guys, stick around, I have a surprise when it comes to the S Pen on this device. It, there is a considerable difference. The 5G version is considerably different in terms of S Pen than the non 5G version. So yeah, the non 5G version comes in black and mystic bronze and 13 inch and 15 inch. And this version here, the 5G, only comes in silver and 13 inch. And if somebody is listening or watching this from Samsung, please send me the black version. I would love to have one. So the regular version of the Galaxy Book Flex 2 is available in South Korea and pretty much every single option, like up to one terabyte storage and so on. And it's actually out for a while already. You are going to love this upcoming section. I pretty much didn't at first, but now I do looking back. I was stranded in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night with my Galaxy Book Flex 2 and a couple of phones. And oh my God, does this sound posh or there's no showing off intended, I swear. So look, I did a 5G speed test when I was outside. Not that time matters, but it was pretty dark. And I intentionally put it against the iPhone 12. Both devices have the same network. In fact, share the same telecom account, but different SIM cards. So all is really equal. The iPhone showed me 5G is available, which is pretty cool. The Galaxy Book Flex 2 showed me LTE availability. One thing you should know before you get to 5G, you need to quickly enable this in the Samsung app. So look, the results made me really happy. I don't know why, but I really thought it was cool that the Galaxy Book Flex 2 outperformed the iPhone 12 by 3X. It just made me smile. And I thought this was amazing because that means you can comfortably work wherever you are when you have that L even LTE available, never mind 5G, and that is pretty cool. And shame on you, Apple. And yes, feel free to comment what I haven't done correctly to get to the speed on the iPhone 12. And you know, maybe I'm just too simple when it comes to that. At the end of the day, I am a simple man. So coming back home safely, I thought the first thing to do is write your notes down to what happened, right? So because I don't remember two days later, what better device to do that than the Book Flex 2? So taking out the S Pen here out of the Galaxy Book Flex 2, I noticed a couple of things. Number one is, you know, when the pop-up air command menu comes up on your screen here, it is basically curved. Usually it is curved in all the other models. This one is rectangle. It's kind of a, you know, this is what it is. And I thought this is different already. And then I did some investigations. I found out that it doesn't have 
Air actions. So it simply doesn't have it. It is just not present on a 5G version. And I tripled and I quadruple check. It's just not here. It's just not here. So the good thing is though, however, you don't have to charge your pen. You basically don't have to do anything. Just plug it in and plug it out, pull it out. That's it. But it is available on the non 5G version. As for the writing experience itself, with the S Pen included, it is actually not bad. And you can use different pens. You can use it from your Tab S7 lineup. And there's no difference in latency here altogether. What I would say though is once you use your Tab S7 or Tab S7 Plus for taking notes, you pretty much know this is it. This is the experience you want to have. And you don't have that on here. Not to say this is a bad device, but you will be able to tell the difference once you have that experience on the Tab S7 or Tab S7 Plus. So look, it is a laptop that helps you being productive in many different ways. So it's not a deal breaker with the, with the writing experience. Absolutely not. You will not feel that it's bad at all. Palm rejection works fine. So it really is a good device, a good multifunctional device. So as for the pen, I'm going to take it out here. I was going to show you this here on top. It is kind of some kind of clickable. Can you hear this? It's clickable here. It doesn't do anything. And it's because it doesn't have the air action or anything included. It basically what it does, it really helps you to put your pen in. So you can do it like this. Can you hear this? Like this, and then you pull it out at this. That's the only function the top of the pen has to basically help you put it in your device and help you pulling it out. As for the placement of the pen itself, I wish they would have kept it on the side. I don't really like the font here. It is a bit low in the chassis. So the kind of, I have to lift the device every, every time I want to get it out. So it's not like a hundred percent super duper functional. It is doable, but I'm using a different pen anyway. So this is really uh, when you travel and you have a pen tucked away, but something to keep in mind. Going back to performance, and you guys know that different applications use different components of your device. And what I'm trying to say here is, be mindful of your needs. Um, maybe maybe expectations is the better word here. Number one, corporate world, home office, you will be delighted with this device. You will have no issues performance wise. All the ports are future proof for years. Thunderbolt 4 lets you plug in an 8K display. I think it is 8K. It works with my 5K LG display just fine. And you open up plenty of Chrome tabs, Office applications, no worries. It feels super fast. Number two is creative work. It's a different story here altogether. And whilst you can use Adobe Lightroom with good performance, I wouldn't use Photoshop or Adobe Premiere to the full extent. Light use is okay, but that's pretty much it. The processor can really handle a good workload, but the GPU is limited when it comes to creative applications. So number three is gaming. And you can see here our universal Fortnite test and the GPU is pretty much maxed out. And this is on medium settings, so it is what it is. So my recommendation here is any GPU intensive task, I would definitely avoid in this on this machine. But we got up to 90 FPS in medium settings, so this is at peak, although the screen only has 60 Hertz or 60 FPS, but the Fortnite FPS showed me up to 90 in peak times. So for all of you guys who do video calls, this is the picture and sound quality of the Galaxy Book Flex number two. And but really looking in the screen here, I think it's just average. And the microphone, I think, is also just average. So but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I wish companies would listen to this or kind of recognize that we are all sitting at home. But you know what? This is my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. So look, I tried really, really hard. Personally, I have no use case for that world facing camera on this laptop. And I know you can scan documents and maybe you take pictures of your whiteboard. All is good. I just don't know how useful this is going to be. I put the device in several positions like to see if you can use maybe the cameras by switching them around like this or holding it up. and. I just couldn't make something of it. I'm sorry. And nothing really changed speaker wise, but here for yourself. So then we have the battery life and the only test, I did a few tests, the only test I haven't done 
done is taken it out and just have it on mobile data all day long. When you have it fully charged, you have it on your desk, you have it in normal mode. I had some video calls all day, some office applications that last up to 12 hours. Fine, there's no problem unless you have some really heavy tasks involved. So charging time is about two hours from zero to 100% and 50% charging time is around 50 minutes. So just to be aware of the numbers here. There's one thing I noticed and hear me out first before you put your comments down. Overnight, it discharged the battery from full to zero twice. All the day that was working at night, it was fully charged and I closed the lid and at the morning, that was it. There was almost a zero charge. And I'm not a Windows wizard, so let me know if there's something I need to do in settings. I checked it all, but let me know. Let me know in the comments below. So there are a few more things I need to touch on. You probably noticed that I didn't say anything about the display and that's just an example. Reason being is it is still the same display from first gen, right? There's nothing changed here. And I love the QLED. I love the look of all of this display lineup in the Galaxy Book Flex 1 2, right? All fine. I wish though, I wish that the chin would have been reducted like a chin reduction would be really cool but it's just that chin down i'm not feeling it i'm sorry i'm just not feeling the chin and the device does not overheat and that is a good thing but there's also something you need to know the reason being is that the fan kicks in and it kicks in a lot even when no application is running in the background so that is something you guys need to be aware of. So since this is all about portability in 5G, it also does not have wireless power share. So if you're looking for that, you need to go to the non 5G version if you can get one or the OG Book Flex. I'm actually getting to a point where I understand what Samsung is trying to do with their pre-installation of software. And yes, I, I know, I know it is simple, but sometimes I just need reminding of what it is and simply is they want to build their own ecosystem. The ecosystem we so much want and need. The challenge is obviously different operating systems. You have a laptop that runs Windows, you have your Tapas 7 that runs Android and that is a challenge and that can be confusing to some people but I'm starting to dig what's going on. I'm starting to really get into the ecosystem and I think it's a great thing that Samsung is pulling this off now. Guys, I don't want to stop just yet. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep using the Galaxy Book Flex 2 and then we'll come back with another in-depth review to really show and demonstrate the findings we have. So if you want to be part of this journey thank you so much but anyway let me know in the comments below what it is you like about the galaxy book flex 2 or what it is you don't like about the lineup let me know in the comments below thank you for watching and as always stay safe peace out